I think the autopsy's gonna have to wait a little bit. If this happened to me while confirming a death, then the only certificate I'd be signing is a permanent sick note for myself. Very excited to be reacting to House MD Season 6, Episode 6, Braveheart. On this channel, we are reacting to all 177 House episodes, and this will be Episode 117. Let's see if I can get the diagnosis before House does as a doctor working in London. Got two broken bones, a severe concussion, collapsed lung. You fell 30 feet. You should have died. My dad, grandfather, and great grandfather all dropped dead of heart problems right after they turned 40. If there is something wrong, I know a doctor who'll find it. Oh, God! I'll be back in 10. I'm picking lint out of my belly button. You didn't want me to sleep where you and Amber slept. Can I tell you something? I wasn't picking lint out of my belly button. Oh, man. Patient's a genetic time bomb. I'm labeling it a coincidence. You hate coincidence. Let's start with genetic tests. Get an EKG, cardiac calf, and an echo to check the integrity of his heart. I don't care if this patient thought he was gonna die anyway. If I was a police commissioner and one of my officers flung themselves off a roof to catch a crook, he's getting so many promotions that Alibaba will look expensive. <laughs> okay, that makes no sense. All right, my one-year-old daughter could figure out why our officer has broken ribs and a concussion, but the interesting thing here is three generations of hearts with a slight tendency towards premature implosion. Cardiologists have struggled. House thinks it's a coincidence, but one doctor alone in his garage will figure this out with your support. House did mention that there's no genetic link, so it's likely he's been tested for this before. So what other than genetics can run in families? Eating habits is one thing, but that would cause blocked coronary arteries, which they would have found. Families also tend to share a geographical location, so what if it was built on a cursed burial site or a previous toxic dump? It's called Braveheart. Maybe a company tried to get them to build their house somewhere else, and they stood firm, leading to four generations of environmental poisoning. Oh, I do like that theory, but what could be so covertly cardiotoxic without being detected? Well, we know that around $10 billion worth of precious metals are dumped each year in the form of electronic waste. That includes things like gold, platinum, and other precious metals, so it's not much of a stretch that toxic metals could be part of that electronic waste. That's especially true since for every person on the planet, there's around 7.3 kilos of electronic waste per year. Heavy metals like lead, arsenic, or cadmium could leach their way into the family's water supply and lead to toxic levels building up as well. The team of cardiologists may not think to test for it in an otherwise well patient either. With a suspicious mind though, it should be relatively easy to detect and can be fixed with chelation. Oh, that would fit really nicely and also fits the Braveheart title, so I'm gonna go with heavy metal poisoning for my first diagnostic guess. Question for you smart people, how militant are you with your recycling? Do you put recyclable things in the general waste? Be honest, answers down below. For 10 times, been going on long enough. I don't have a medical license. You need to complete 120 hours of rounds to requalify. It's a state requirement. Dr. Singh supervises rounds on Thursdays. Nothing. We send him home. There are other things we can check. A skeleton of the great grandfather's in decent shape. Subsurface genetic material from the grandpa's fine. I'll sequence the gene for the cardiac sodium channel. I read in the paper you're treating a police officer, Donnie Compson. Second floor. I think Donnie doesn't know this, but he has a son. Well, extension 742. Tell Dr. Foreman you got some cool information. Couldn't find any consistent genetic mutations across 15 areas between Donnie's ancestors, possibly indicating there isn't one. It makes sense to get the DNA where it's most pure. She wants to know if there's something wrong with Donnie. I don't want to. You need to tell him. I've been lying to him his whole life. What's he gonna think of me? If Donnie does die, this could be Michael's only chance to meet his father. She's choking! On your fingers. House, please take your finger off the test button. Oh! I could have slit her throat. There's urine everywhere. You learned anything yet? I was pregnant when we broke up. Sorry, I never told you, but I knew how you felt about having kids. He wants to meet you. I don't want to meet him. Hi, I'm Michael. Hi. 
My dad died when I was your age. It was the most painful thing I ever went through. Chromosomes for 28 cardiovascular conditions are normal in number and structure. No translocations, deletions, or inversions. The patient is choking! Yes, on your fingers! On your fingers! I love how House is making a mockery of the process so he gets signed off before the end. In reality, he would have been kicked off the round and had his sign-off sheet incinerated and told it's a shame there's no rehab for his lack of manners. Speaking of rehab though, isn't it interesting that his psychiatrist told him that he needs a change in environment and now he's sleeping in a room overflowing with pictures of the very person who was haunting him. Brilliant television. They've definitely upped their game for season six. Speaking of numbers, it's interesting that the patient's son didn't know about their father for a number of years, and just as he meets him, this incendiary family history puts roadblocks on their relationship. It reminds me of Ichiro Kishimi's The Courage to be Disliked, where a small boy goes to a philosopher about the truth of happiness. The philosopher then controversially argues that trauma isn't real, based on Alfred Adler's philosophy. Yet, what we're seeing here is surely an example of trauma in action. So how could it not be real? Well, the philosopher mentions that many of us look at the world as it is and don't realize that we have a choice. That choice is what lens to look at the world with. How you choose to see the world is what will dictate your future. It is teleology, which is the purpose of things that matter, not etiology, which is the cause or the past of things. As such, the past does not determine the future. So what does? Well, the philosopher argues that it's your present goals and how they influence your perception that do. Most people haven't truly accepted themselves for who they are, which causes limitations. Yet it isn't our equipment that makes us, but how we use it. One person's father may have died and goes into isolation because of it, locking themselves away from the cruel world, where another may use it as a reason to have made their father proud, understanding the finitude and value of life. I can definitely relate to that perspective. Either way, let's see if this ticking time bomb actually explodes. Send him home. He's not gonna believe he's healthy. You're not very good at your job. He's had dozens of doctors tell him he's fine. You think you can change his thinking? Chase, walk with me. There's no case, I had nothing to add. A little devil on your shoulder I told you to kill a guy and now the little angel won't shut up. Talk to someone. Docs, fix me up in seven weeks. You have Ortoli syndrome. Short circuits the adrenals, which short circuits the heart. Blah, blah, blah. It's complicated. Take some pills, I'm gonna be okay. Thank you. You'll sign these discharge papers. I'll get you a bottle of meds. Were you on the phone? No. Donnie collapsed four hours after we discharged him. He's dead. They sent the guy home with mints. I requested they ship him back to our morgue for the postmortem. Donnie Compson, age 39. It's his heart. Let's look at his heart. That's odd. Almost looks like he's bleeding. What would it seems like our autopsy has just turned into a salvage operation. Who would have known that diagnosing patients with fake syndromes to discharge them can lead to a repeat visit in a body bag? Maybe cutting into his chest will leave the pressure around his heart, which was compressing it and caused him to come back to life. This bleeding was pretty much immediate though, and we would expect some time delay if it was actually because of that. Instead, the patient must have another reason for his live action reanimation. In medicine, we call this the Lazarus effect, so how could it happen? Well, there's only ever been about 38 cases of it ever happening, and it's named after the biblical figure who was resurrected by Jesus four days after his death. Lazarus. Most of the cases of this Lazarus phenomenon have a patient who had CPR, which was unsuccessful, and then just after being pronounced dead, they check the pulse and it's pulsing. The theory is that the heart is a bit of a loner. When it's not being repetitively thumped, then it relaxes, fills with blood, and this stretching is what triggers the electricity to come back. Something needs to stop the heart in the first place though, so what could that have been? Well, the standard causes are four H's and four T's, hypovolemia, low blood volume, hypokalemia, low potassium, hydrogen ions, which is acidosis, and hypothermia. The four T's are tension pneumothorax, air building in one lung, toxins, like I mentioned from the start, thrombosis, so a massive clot in one of the coronary vessels or in the lungs, or tamponade, which is what I mentioned with the fluid being drained. In a situation like this, Believe it or not, the morgue may not be the best equipped area for him, but he'd have to stay until they made sure he's at least stabilized. I know it's horrifying to imagine someone getting sword while being awake, but before ether started to be used as an anesthetic, 
Surgeons had to operate with no sedation. So how did people even manage? Well, there's a famous case of a woman called Frances Burney, who at the age of just 21 was diagnosed with breast cancer. The surgeons wanted to operate immediately, but she knew what that would mean. And so she initially resisted. Then a year later, as things progressed, she finally agreed to have it. She writes, when the dreadful steel was plunged into the breast, cutting through veins, arteries, flesh, nerves. I needed no injunctions not to restrain my cries. There are accounts of her passing out at least three times during the surgery because of the pain. Even with all of that, she somehow managed not to fight the surgeons during the operation. The success of her surgery allowed her to live cancer-free for 29 more years. You know, only 10% of people would agree with the statement that the world is getting better, but when we look at the past, it's tough to deny. Either way, it seems our patient may have just denied the Grim Reaper, so let's see how. I think the autopsy's gonna have to wait a little bit. Differential diagnosis for resurrection, go. Obviously he wasn't dead. What if it's not his heart? We need to think about causes in places you didn't look. What about a genetic predisposition to an autoimmune disease? Start him on steroids. And obviously I don't have Ortoli syndrome. At our middle ear respond well. Hearing thresholds are normal at all frequencies. Ear drum is perfectly healthy. I sometimes hear whispering. If you're also hearing sounds that you shouldn't, well that would be psychosis. You'd have to talk to someone who does brain. I only do ears. It's amazing how you did 120 hours in one day. I'm not ready to be a doctor again. Are you sleeping out here? I just dozed off in front of the TV. With bedding? My jaw still hurts. My tooth actually a lot. I'm sorry, you're maxed out on your pain meds. The tooth the guy pulled out, there was nothing wrong with it. Leaf or money syndrome. It's hereditary and it increases a person's risk of having bone cancer. If this happened to me while confirming a death, then the only certificate I'd be signing is a permanent sick note for myself. Just kidding, there's no way I'd still be able to hold a pen. We finally have a non-heart related clue though, and it's acute pain of the jaw. Cameron thinks it's because of Lee from any syndrome, which is a rare condition that causes multiple cancers, but not really of the heart. It might explain the jaw pain, but not the ticker needing more than a battery change. We also know the patient's blood pressure dropped below 60 temporarily, so what could bring all this together? The tooth he pulled out was normal, which means it could have been trigeminal neuralgia, which is irritation of the nerve commonly mistaken as tooth pain. That's much more common in females though, and doesn't have much of a link to the heart. Wait, I have an idea. It might also be osteonecrosis of the jaw. Maybe his braveness and impulsive activities are because of excessive production of adrenal hormones into the middle age. Cortisol can be released from the gland, which can cause the jaw to disintegrate. And we know adrenaline and noradrenaline could cause arrhythmias in the heart without there being anything structurally wrong when we look directly. Pheochromocytoma is a tumor that would produce way too high levels of both of those and can be inherited with gene mutations. Oh, that would fit perfectly and has to be my second diagnostic guess. Gamma survey would locate the tumors. I had pea soup today. You'd love my breath right now. No cancers on the lateral cuneiform bone. Chase is lying to me. And I know you know. What's really scary is that I hear whispering while not on Vicodin. I'm gonna check myself back into Mayfield. Okay. Okay? You know. You overheard me talking to my dead girlfriend? Why are you talking to her? Sorry I'm late. Yesterday you said you weren't ready. Yesterday I wasn't. This is the part where you play the employee and I play the boss. I can see your nipples. Your turn. That's not hate. It's foreplay. Gamma survey revealed no tumors. Hereditary sensory autonomic neuropathy type 1. Carbamazepine fixes them. No, I don't care how much that room scares you. You're doing your job. You ever kill anyone? No. I know a few guys who did, though. I had an ex-partner who nearly drank himself into oblivion. Did he get help? Help didn't help. Oh, God! I went to the bathroom. Patients lost bowel control. It means we were wrong about age San. It means he's getting worse. Fast. Brilliant lesson here. If you try and face your fears, then you'll be greeted with the stench of hopelessness and the sound of a fresh bowel movement or the other way around. Either way, we have a new clue, loss of bowel control. That most definitely makes me think the problem is neurological. There could be something compromising the spine, but that would also cause localized pain and likely leg paralysis or weakness if it led to bowel incontinence or a hereditary condition that's damaging the nerves. I have an idea. What if they didn't find the gene mutation because they were looking for the obvious cardiac genes, but not something more systemic? 
familial amyloid polyneuropathy. It's an exceptionally rare inherited condition that can be inherited from just one parent as it's autosomal dominant. That means each child would have a 50% risk of getting it. So those odds to get four unlucky generations would be 6.25%. Rarer things have definitely happened, like a dog saving its owner from drowning, Ronaldo going to Saudi Arabia, or Joe Biden finding his way off stage without falling. So what causes nerve damage in FAP? Mainly the liver produces abnormal proteins that misfold and get deposited in nerves and other tissues. This happens because of a mutation in something called the transthyretin gene. They could diagnose familial amyloid polyneuropathy by checking for a gene mutation, then a cure would surprise be with a liver transplant or medications that silence the gene mutation or stabilize the misfolded proteins. It would fit here so well, so familial amyloid polyneuropathy has to be my third and final diagnostic guess. We are locked in. I killed a man, but it was the right thing to do. Every human life is sacred. I'm afraid that forgiving me for killing the worst person on earth sets a bad precedent. Just forgive me. You can't have absolution without first taking responsibility. You have to turn yourself into the police. I've signed off on all your hours. Just like this, you press my buttons, I press yours. By buttons, you mean? You're not gonna die. The epiphany moment. I won't ask you to press my buttons because I know you already have. I see you subscribers. What I don't have though are more diagnostic guesses. Probably couldn't use them anyway though because what does button pushing have to do with four generations of cardiac implosion? Maybe the buttons he's talking about are the pacemaker nodes in the heart. Something pushing them could be something outside the heart that we couldn't see that keeps interfering with their function. How could that work though? Is it not a physical thing, but maybe the blood salt levels? Surely if it was physical and had large enough of an impact, then it would have been visible on the heart that's been photographed more than a Kim Kardashian, but at all with her ex-husband. I mean, scarring could do it as well, like a condition called myocardial fibrosis that could fit in all fairness and maybe miss. There isn't an easy fix for it though, although aggressively treating the normal boring stuff like diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, or any cardiac inflammation could help. Probably would need a biopsy to confirm. I'm surprised they haven't done one of those already, to be honest, since they were already in the guy's chest with a saw. What's a little extra souvenir while you're there? All right. I need to know this diagnosis. You also inherited a self-destruct button. It forms in the brainstem. Technically, it's an aneurysm. As you get older, it gets bigger. It stops the signal from your brain to your heart, and bam. I'm gonna cut into your brain to make you think that I'm fixing it. I'm gonna be cutting into your son's brain, too. Michael's gonna be okay. Can I give him a call? In a bit. The saving the kid from pain stuff was crap. You've had it easy. Sorry to screw you up. What kind of movies do you like? It's two in the morning. Where were you? You're drunk. What aren't you telling me? Hi, Dad. Don't worry, some good times. Wilson! This is stupid. He really is getting better. Brain berry aneurysm! No headache. No rupture when he fell off a roof. No raised intracranial pressure symptoms. I have to admit, it is a distant, distant stretch that this diagnosis could even remotely cause this patient's symptoms. Still quite interesting though. Also love the way this episode was crafted with the House Wilson whispering shenanigans and the fact that Braveheart is now applying to House letting down his guard, as well as the patient doing his crazy parkour business. All right, episode overall, 7.4 out of 10 entertainment. 5.1 out of 10 accuracy, 6 out of 10 diagnosis. This episode doesn't make full sense until you watch the previous one where CEO has luck in all the wrong areas. Here.